I am a Midlander. And that is, I do believe, the most uninspiring, interesting, unexciting English tribe to belong to. If your home is Liverpool, then you've got something. People, they call you a whack. Or a scouse. And you're a somebody. Take your place with pride alongside the Cockney, the Geordie, the White Rose, the Red Rose, the West Countryman. But me, I'm a nobody. No tradition, no proper accent, and I'm even worse. I'm not even a Brummie. Home's the other side. The East Midlands is my country. Leicester and Nottingham, the two towns I've grown around, that I've got mad about, that I go home to. Not that I was born in either of those two. I was born on the border, where the South ends and the Midlands begin. I was born in Northampton. Bushland Road, it was. I remember the road. Every comfort, every amenity, and looking like it could be anywhere. But that's not my home, not now. I went to school from there and passed 11 plus. When I was 18, I went to Leicester, to university. When I first went, I never thought how it would change me, how the city would become my home. You see, it's because I care about it that I find so much in it that puzzles me, that I don't understand, that I want to crib at and criticise. And there's so much about it that's marvellous. It's the richest. Well, at any rate, it's one of the richest cities in Europe. No slums. To find the poor, you have to look very hard. No boom, no slump ever comes to Leicester. There's money to spend, steady, regular, ready money in thick wage packets. You drive the car into there above the supermarket where, I tell you, when the trading stamps flooded the shops first in November, the only place in Britain where housewives were actually fighting to get at the stamps, it was there, beneath this whirly-whirly. You don't have to park right up here. There are spaces lower down. It's worth coming up here, though, because you get such a nice view. From here, you see Leicester. A red brick bot lodge on the countryside, much larger than Northampton. With its suburbs, Leicester has nearly half a million people. This car park isn't full yet, but it soon will be, and so will the new one they're building over there instead of parking meters. Leicester tries not to let the motorists park in the streets. But I came to the university, not to the city. It wasn't very big then, and it took me ages to find it when I first went. It used to be a mental hospital once before I was there. It's changed now. There's all these new buildings. It's like the town of Leicester, in a way. Very exciting, that glass house thing, but no centre to it, no focal point. Like the town, there's this anonymous thing. Take the buses all over the place and saying centre. And so you think, they must be going somewhere. And so they are. Yes, look. They're going to the clock tower and the five streets that lead off it, the centre of the city, the symbol, the glory, the civic pride of Leicester. Look at Coventry, 30 miles away. That's got a centre. Birmingham, even Birmingham. Every other week, there's something new, something big's gone up in the city centre. Northampton, smaller and older. That has a real centre, a market square, a civic church. But Leicester, bring that picture back. Round and round the buses go, round this clock tower. All the main streets converge here, onto this, this clock. Just a clock, watching you like the one at work. On New Year's Eve, the people of Leicester will come to worship, to dance Ring a Ring of Roses around the clock. But two years ago, some of the town lads went a little wild and left off the dancing and went into the streets that lead away from the tower. And berserk, they smashed the shop fronts in. And they're such good shops. Here you see the prosperity. The shops are very good, like my own mum says. Shopping from Northampton, I much prefer to go to Leicester than to Coventry, for instance, because I find the shops more varied and they're closer together. There's not so much walking to be done. 
I find them more satisfactory than our shops in Northampton. Everything in Leicester is automagical and new. Nine months ago, the tent been opened, and there's another on the way. Technology entertains. It's good, it's great. Open all day and all night. A 24-hour service. Most come for the bowling, but that's not all. It's a nice place to come to as a place. If you're going to meet someone, and you're not sure whether they'll object to meeting you in a pub, where can you suggest to meet? On a corner, in the rain or in the cold? You could say the railway station, but the ten pin's better. It's warm, it's classless. There's not any kind of snob thing here, and there's always something exciting to watch. You can get something to eat, and you can bring the kids. I think it's great. It's changed this city. Above the ten pin, our multi-story wheelie wheelie, with its roots in the supermarket. Get into the car, and down and round, and down and round, and don't forget, and down and round, and down and round, and no, oh, have your token ready, and down and round, and stop. Right, deposit the token. Made it, we're away. It's like one of those newfangled level crossing gates. It's like a frontier post, only no signalman, no guards, it's all automatic. Isn't that good? It just so happened that I wanted a stamp. And so naturally, I mean, you make for the post office, don't you? The drive in post office. Marvellous. Hello. Can't reach it. Ah, yes, yes, success. Lovely. Good morning, thank you. Drive a wagon. Now, let's pretend that I had a bank account. And let's pretend I also had a car. And let's all go to the driving bank. Driving in again. Hello. Can I have some money, please? No? <laughs> oh, well. Where would you find the money to take from the bank, to put in the car, to spend in the ten pin and change for a token? In Leicester, you make things. You make bits and bobs, things that don't last for very long. Not ships, but nuts and bolts and pieces for the ship, the motor car, the aircraft. Not coats or suits, but shirts and socks and underclothes. I had a flat once above a hairdresser's. And from my window, I could see 13 factory chimneys. I worked in a factory once. We welded rubber to metal into things. Things for all sorts of industries. Things for ships, cars, trains, bridges, roads. Most of the time, I never found out what I was making, except that I knew they went into almost every machine in half the world. Very necessary things if we are to live well. But to me, it was soul destroying. I mean, I never had any sense of achievement. The wages and conditions were good. But at the end of the day, you've made 500, 400, 600 things. Well, you think a machine could do that? You don't need to be a man. And what do you feel like doing after work? I know what most did. They carried on, home to the TV, to bingo, to the family. I know what I did, screaming, sick of it all, jump on the bike and home and change and into something sharp and onto the town. Which is better, home to the telly or out on the town? I'm not sure. But Leicester, it's got a real town life. We were always talking about it down in the swan. I've been beaten up in the city, but I've lived in Liverpool, I've lived in Manchester, and I've lived in London for a bit. Leicester still is the best city. It's more friendly than any other city in England. For entertainment, for ordinary people, it's still the best. We go into the pubs, they've got more life than any pub I've been to. Now, 
Everybody's heard about a swan, but a lot of people didn't come in the swan. For the simple reason, I know when they walk in the door, there's all the criminals and they're supposed to be hard men of the town and, and all the tough geezers in here, the tough nuts. So therefore, they didn't come in. OK, so it's always full, but what is it full of? Peasants, layabouts, hard cases, out-of-work bums. That's all it is, isn't it, man? It was from here and around that a group of us, two, three years ago, started up a club of our own by the railway on Applegate Street. And the idea was that we ran it for ourselves, by the young, for the young. Complete freedom. It was called the West End. That was a failure before it started, that was. Because you got no idea, none of you. You should have had the wrong people. Yeah. And had the right ones. And then it wouldn't have been a free for all. What was it, anyway? I know what it's supposed to be, but what was it according to you? It was a free for all calf. I'll tell you what it everybody... was. All it was, it was. It was a right dark, dodgy place where people could go in there to get birds, and the birds that went in there was all of one sort. Birds with loose morals. You could capture them as easy as that. And that's why it started turning like it was. It was more, all they wanted outside there was a red light. But you see, I wanted freedom. But in my opinion, the best life is to get a nice missus, somebody you think the world of, you worship, you get a nice little family together like, and get a nice steady job, a steady income, and uh, just perform like everybody else. Be like the Joneses, you know, just get to work ordinary, come home, put your feet up, watch your own television by the fire, have a couple of bevies now and again if you drink. And that's, that's the sort of a life that I'd like. But I'll tell you now, I ain't got the guts, me, because I don't like responsibility, and I don't want to let nobody down. Would you really want that life? Because um, I wouldn't. Yeah, no, listen, well, would I you? would. I would. I would. I don't mind telling you. I don't want to be a bum for all my life. I don't want to. Listen, it's okay. Our life's okay now, but we're getting on now, right? I mean, we ain't teenagers anymore, are we? We can please ourselves exactly when we work and when we don't want to work. That's the best sort of life. Do it, you want. Your own gaffer. Be your own gaffer. You'll never get no working for a bus. We don't like getting up at 7 o'clock and listening to the alarm clock waking us up, you see. We like to wake up when we when we feel we're ready to wake up. We don't like nobody forcing us out of bed and having to clock in and all that game, like, you know. We like to go work when we feel like working. Right? I think I, I can think to speak for all of us. There you are, Tom. I think everyone's after it, this freedom. But how do you get it? Unless even the rich don't have it. 